please join me in thinking back to a time you felt wronged. Not just wronged, but wronged to the point that you needed relief. You wanted justice. You wanted something to happen. Now, imagine the year is 1790, and you've heard about this new institution called the Judicial Branch. You know from your own personal experience, and maybe even talking with friends, that before the American Revolution, the king or queen in power would often influence judicial proceedings to obtain certain outcomes or to benefit certain individuals. Now you have a choice. You take matters into your own hands. You cut your losses. Hope it never happens again and do nothing. Or do you take a leap of faith and trust this new thing called the judicial branch? The generations before us faced this same choice. Undoubtedly, some chose to take matters into their own hands. Some decided to do nothing. Overwhelmingly, though, the generations before us decided to trust the judicial branch to resolve their conflicts. These individuals weaved into our society a thread that we commonly refer to as the rule of law. This thread has held our society together. It has connected our generations, allowing us to resolve our conflicts with one another and with our government. As a judge and previously as a prosecutor, though, my observations caused me concern that this thread is beginning to thin. I see and hear individuals regularly tell me their willingness to take matters into their own hands, ignoring the laws and the rules that we abide by. This leads to chaos and it leads to instability. I cannot help but wonder, where will we be in 10 years? What about 50 years? In 1976, Gallup began an annual survey where they asked those surveyed to rate the honesty and ethics of various occupational groups. Of concern is that in 2021, judges reached an all-time low with only 38% of those surveyed indicating that they would rate the honesty of judges as high or very high. Just as concerning is that in 2013, a Pew Research Center survey found that only 18% of those responding indicated that they believe lawyers contribute a lot to our society. These numbers are concerning because they show that as a society, we are no longer trusting the judicial branch as we once did. It shows that we're no longer turning to the judicial branch and the court system to resolve our conflicts. But most importantly, it shows that we as a society are failing in our effort to pass on the rule of law to the next generation. How do we pass on the rule of law to the next generation? I'm glad you asked. Professor Albert Bandura teaches social cognitive theory. In that theory, he teaches that individuals' knowledge is contributed by their observations of not only themselves in various situations, but also observations of others, as well as the observations they obtain through outside media influence. The most basic premise of the theory is that as individuals, we take the observations that we make each and every day, and we use those to guide our next steps and our subsequent behavior. This makes sense to our common life and our common sense even outside of the classroom. As a child, I belonged to a lower income family. My mom delivered newspapers at night because she had finished one year of college and unfortunately couldn't find a job that allowed her to be at home with us when we weren't in school. My dad, a middle school dropout, worked at the kitchens at Walt Disney World. As a child, I would try to help my parents with the newspaper route as much as I possibly could. So naturally, I went to school with ink stained and worn out clothes. As you would expect, when I looked around and compared what I was wearing to those around me, I didn't always feel like I fit in. 
perceptionally, I didn't feel like I looked like those around me. During these times in my life and in those years, I would watch how students interacted with me and how the rules were there to protect me, to make sure that they treated me the same way they would treat someone else. I would watch the teachers as they instructed me and see that the rules required them to teach me the same way as those around me, even though I may have looked a little bit different or didn't quote unquote fit in. As a child, these observations gave me a comfort and a security in the rules that shaped my life. That as long as I followed these rules, I would have the same access and the same opportunities as those around me, regardless of what somebody thought or their personal opinions of me. In reality, all of us have gone through similar experiences where our observations have instructed us on how to get through our first day on a new job, the first day of school, or even a new social experience. This creates a troubling situation for the judicial branch. Individuals rarely have the opportunity to meaningfully observe and engage the judicial branch before they're called upon to make the decision of whether or not to trust the court system. In fact, most perceptions of the judicial branch are shaped by media influence. If I were to ask you now to name the first judge that came to mind, I would be willing to bet that Judge Judy would be the first ones off your lips. I think it goes without saying that Judge Judy and her shows are not an accurate representation of the American justice system. Concerningly though, media portrayal of the United States Supreme Court suggests that the justices are hopelessly divided along partisan lines, unable to talk, communicate, or reach joint resolution. Challenging this concept, PolitiFact did a study between 2008 and 2019 of the opinions issued by the High Court. They found each year no less than 36% of the issued opinions had a unanimous ruling from all of the justices, at a minimum with some years being higher. In 2016, for example, the justices were unanimous 66% of the time. As with any system, isolated observance creates skewed and inaccurate perception. We cannot fix this problem overnight. It will take each and every one of us in this room and in our community to reverse this alarming trend and to make accurate the perceptions that we hold of the court system. One of the most common ways to do this is through one of the most cherished duties as a citizen, jury duty. Concerningly though, in 2016, Pew Research Center study found that only 5% of those adults summoned for jury duty actually served on a jury. The opportunity to witness a jury trial is the opportunity to watch the most fundamental decision-making process of the judicial branch. You get to firsthand watch the unscripted nature of lawyers questioning witnesses and making arguments in an attempt to convince the people, the jurors of a community, that the facts are and the situation was as they are trying to portray. In a criminal jury trial, a juror has the opportunity to witness the convergence of all three branches of government. They witness the executive branch through the work of a prosecutor whose job is to prove beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt that the accused is guilty of violating one of our laws. The laws passed by the legislative branch, which is the people's representatives. While the judicial branch presides to umpire the proceeding, making sure that the process is fair and that both sides follow the law. In that moment, not only is the juror getting to observe this process, but the person who's accused of that crime or of even that civil complaint has the opportunity to see individuals and citizens from all walks of life from our community reach a decision about that case. In fact, every juror is instructed before they go back to deliberate 
that they are to limit their deliberations to not only the facts that have been portrayed during the trial, the arguments that have been presented by the lawyers, but that they're also supposed to bring their common sense to the table. In a criminal jury trial, that jury is then charged with reaching a unanimous decision about what happened to decide whether or not somebody is guilty or not guilty. In that moment, the person who's accused of the crime gets to see the unanimous decision of jurors from all walks of life. And in that moment, they are reassured of the promise that we are guaranteed by the Constitution that the judicial branch and that our laws will be enforced by the people of this country. Beyond jury duty, it is easier than ever to observe Florida courts. As a general matter, Florida court proceedings are open to the public absent extraordinary circumstances. Although COVID brought a lot of negative things into our life, one of the positives was that it advanced the court system to using remote technology such as Zoom to hold many of our proceedings. So whereas generations ago, we would walk around the courthouse observing with our own eyes what was happening, that we lost that tradition due to work schedules, social engagements, and frankly, the hustle and bustle of life that we've now been plunged into. But through Zoom, individuals now from wherever they are can log in and watch a court proceeding as long as it's not disruptive or takes away from the decorum of the process. In addition to observing the court system, we must also actively engage it. I often talk to individuals who tell me, what's the sense in trying? No one's going to believe me. It won't matter. Nothing's going to come of it anyway. I can't help but ask myself in that moment, how would you ever know without trying? As a judge, I try to be transparent in all the rulings that I give. I try to connect the facts of a situation with the law as it is required. When I can, I will issue written opinions so that way when it is less emotional, when it is less stressful, an individual can go back and read my ruling and understand the logic that I use to reach my decision. Because although someone may disagree with a judge's ruling, through observation and through that transparency, they learn to trust the process and remember that reasonable people can disagree. But if nobody ever uses the court system, never have the opportunity to witness that process. In fact, some people tell me anyone who is arrested is always found guilty. But according to the Florida Courts of Administrative Office, the Office of State Courts Administration, in the fiscal years 2018 to 2019, one out of, about one out of four defendants were actually acquitted at trial or had their charges dropped against them. This does not even take into account the cases that are dropped on the way to trial or cases that are dismissed by the court as having lacking the foundation necessary to proceed. Unlike the scripts that you see on television, the courtroom is an unscripted event that is always dependent on the facts and the situation at that moment. Imagine, if you will, if we stopped using the court system. If we stopped using the court system, there would be no system for the next generation to observe. If there's no, gener there's no system for the generation after us to observe, then they cannot learn to trust the system. In that moment, that generation will have no reason to use the system because they don't trust it. And when we don't have a system in place to resolve our conflicts, then we choose our own system. And when we choose our own system, we choose to have a community of chaos instead of a nation of law. Please join me in actively engaging, participating, and observing the court process so that way we can pass on the rule of law to the next generation so that we can strengthen the thread that holds our community together, so that way our children and our great-grandchildren can enjoy the stability and the order that comes from being a nation of law.
Thank you.